for Salt Lake City Police Department. Thank you for being here today. We have several federal, state, and local partners that are here with us today who have helped and supported in this case. Special thanks are given to Acting Assistant Special Agent in Charge Bob Meacham from the FBI, District Attorney Sim Gill, Commissioner of Public Safety Jess Anderson, and Chief Craig Black of North Salt Lake City. I will now turn the time over to Chief Mike Brown, who will be giving the statements today. Thank you all for being here today. It's with heavy heart that I address you today. After an exhaustive week of investigation, we are filing charges of aggravated murder, aggravated kidnapping, obstruction of justice, and desecration of a body in the homicide of Mackenzie Lewick. The man charged with these horrific and tragic crimes is the person of interest, Ayola Adese Achaya. I will not be saying the killer's name again, but we'll go through what has transpired in the last 12 days. <clears throat> On June 20, 2019, the Salt Lake City Police Department was notified of a missing, a missing person investigation for Mackenzie Lewick. Investigations confirmed that on June 17th, McKenzie departed a plane at the Salt Lake City Airport at approximately 2 a.m. McKenzie obtained a ride via transport services to the, uh, to the destination of Hatch Park, located in North Salt Lake City. McKenzie was dropped off by the transport services at the Hatch Park where another individual met with her. McKenzie left the park with this individual at approximately 3 a.m. on June 17th. Investigations were conducted on McKenzie's phone records, social media, and other communications, which showed that all communications ceased from McKenzie at 3 a.m. on June 17th. Investigations into McKenzie's phone showed that the, that the communications and data ceased at the time of June 17th at approximately 3 a.m. Investigation of McKenzie's phone records show that her last communication were with the arrested person. In an interview with him, he admitted to having text conversations with McKinsey on June 16th at approximately 6 p.m., but nothing after that time. The arrested person stated that he did not know what McKinsey looked like and denied having seen a photo or online profile of McKinsey, despite having several photos of her and the profile photo. The arrested person denied any personal contact with McKenzie or meeting with her at any time. Investigations of both the arrested persons and McKenzie's phone records show the location of their phones to be at Hatch Park within less than a minute of each other. This was the same time as McKenzie's phone stopped receiving any further data or location services on June 17th at approximately 3 a.m. In speaking with McKenzie's family, members of her family and close friends, it is highly unusual and suspect that McKenzie would not have any communications or social media activity despite multiple attempts to contact her by them and by law enforcement. During a search warrant on the arrested person's residence and property on June 26th, the arrested person's neighbors informed detectives that they observed, observed him burning something in his backyard with the use of gasoline on the dates of June 17th and June 18th. The search warrant resulted in the findings of a fresh dig area on his property, which is the same area that the arrested person was reported burning something. A forensic ex excavation of the burn area was conducted which resulted in the finding of several charred items that were consistent with personal items of McKenzie Lueck. Other charred material was located, which has now been forensically, has been determined to be female human tissue. A DNA profile of that human tissue was obtained during forensic testing by the Utah State Lab. That DNA profile was compared and is consistent with the DNA profile obtained through further forensic testing of personal items of Mackenzie Lueck. 
At 9.20 this morning, we were able to take the sus suspect into custody. After the arrest, I spoke with Greg Lueck and, inf and informed him of the developments in this investigation. This is one of the most difficult phone calls I've ever made. As both Greg and his wife Diana were devastated and heartbroken by this news. Greg wanted me to say again that they are so thankful to the officers and staff of the police department, the community of Salt Lake City, and those across the nation that have shown compassion and tried to help in the search of McKenzie. And I would like to echo his sentiments. I am personally grateful. We will continue to look into this situation to determine if he acted alone or if he had help. Salt Lake City is a tight-knit, caring, family-oriented community. And I hope that we can all work together to help prevent this from ever happening again. Thank you. We will now be hearing from Bob Meacham, the acting assistant special agent in charge of the criminal branch for the Salt Lake City field office. Uh, thanks to the chief, first off. Uh, again, I'm the acting assistant special agent in charge for the uh, FBI Salt Lake Division, the criminal branch. Uh, I'll be very brief. First and foremost, uh, the FBI family wants to send its condolences, sincerest condolences, to the family and friends of Mackenzie. Uh, we've been assisting in this investigation, and we will continue to assist in this investigation until we're done, until it's completed. Uh, our partnerships are very valuable to us with the local law enforcement agencies, particularly here what we did with Salt Lake City. Uh, you'll see the value in it. Um, we'll continue to do that with all of our local partners. Uh, it's extremely valuable to us to maintain those relationships, and it's in tragedies like this where you see how important it is for us to come together as a community and continue to support one another. Thank you. We will now hear from the Salt Lake County District Attorney, Sim Gill. Uh, good, good morning. I just want to take a second. Uh, I won't repeat the factual basis that's articulated by uh, Chief Brown. That's part of our probable cause statement. I just want to take first and foremost a second, uh, both as the Salt Lake County DA's office, to uh, give our sympathies and condolences to uh, Mackenzie's family, uh, her friends, who kept after to get engaged and, and, and bring this to a conclusion. I also want to acknowledge some of the things that you may not know, that the great effort uh, from Chief Brown, Chief Brown and I spoke about this last week personally, the effort from the, uh, the law enforcement community, their effort, there was a lot of speculation out there, they were working very hard. Our partnership with the FBI, the state crime lab, all of them coming together in a concerted effort to try to bring uh, some answer to this very tragic and unfortunate uh, incident. Uh, this, uh, the process now goes forward. Uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the person is moving forward in our criminal justice process, and we, and we will let that process unfold as it goes forward. But I just want to just take a second for all the great effort and uh, long hours that were put in by uh, Salt Lake City PD, all of our uh, uh, partners, and also just wanted to personally thank you, Chief, because I know that you and I talked about this at length and what this has meant to our community and to the family. Thank you. At this time, we will have a statement from the Lueck family read by Mackenzie's uncle. The Lueck family would like to express their gratitude for the effort put forth by the Salt Lake City Police Department and all partnering agencies that assisted, as well as all of the people that provided tips on this case. They are also grateful to her community, her friends, and others around the nation who have supported this investigation. The family will not be taking any questions, and no interviews will be held. Inquiries should be directed to the Salt Lake City Police Department. Again, we ask that everybody respect the privacy of Mackenzie's family and friends at this time. 
Media requests and statements for the family will be taken by the Salt Lake City Police Department. Thank you. The arrested person is currently on his way to be booked in the Salt Lake County Jail. We will not be releasing any further information, but there is still a considerable amount of investigative follow-up that needs to be conducted. This case will then be presented to the District Attorney's Office and move into the prosecution phase. We would like to close this press briefing with special thanks to all the dedicated effort that was given by the women and men of the Salt Lake City Police Department and the community. Thanks to the media for helping us get this word out and we appreciate everybody's diligence on this. Thank you. So now we know what has happened to Mackenzie Lewick. You see her picture there as we take a wide shot there at the Salt Lake City Police Headquarters after learning. We know the person of interest has been taken into custody. He has been identified as Ayula Ajayi. He is the homeowner of that house in the Fair Park neighborhood that is located at 547 North 10th West. In the backyard, police found yesterday Mackenzie's personal items, which had been burned and buried. They also found human female tissues, which were buried in the backyard. This man has been taken into custody again, arrested by Salt Lake City SWAT at about 920 this morning at 10th South and West Temple. And you heard him also mention that they're on their way, taking him right now to the Salt Lake County Jail, charged with aggravated murder, aggravated kidnapping and des desecration of a human body. The police chief mentioned how difficult this was for them. You heard a brief statement from their family and how heartbroken they are right now. Getting that latest update just coming in right now.